This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Uh, guys, so I'm sharing my screen. Uh, let me know once you, it's visible for you. Yeah, thanks, Sano. Okay, so let's just start now. Uh, I'll just go to the agenda slide first. So whatever the things that we are covering for this session. Okay, so this is agenda. So we'll start with what is AWR, then high level tips for AWR, know where to generate, how to generate AWR, and what should be the intervals should be looking for an AWR. Okay, so some few tips for AWR. Then we go in detail for the each and every section of AWR, which is, you know, which can be useful for you to identify any performance bottleneck in database, okay? So this session is not like any other sessions or any other, you know, tutorials so you think uh, you get on uh, online uh, for, you know, performance bottlenecks for Oracle. It's, it's a very detailed AWR report analysis. So please uh, attend it. Uh, and please let me know if you are facing any difficulty to understand any point or any particular uh, inst insight of this Oracle uh, AWR report. So you can see the list of the, I've, I've listed all the, things under an oracle awr report that that is useful for our uh, analysis okay so you can see from top header load profile time order statistics till segments by role of it so these are the areas of awr that we will be going through in detail so each and every uh, section what it does and how your performance uh, can, i mean how this section relates to identify your issues okay uh, then at the last, so I have this ADDM and ASH, so I not, I'm not, I'm not sure whether I will be covered. We will be able to cover it in today's session. But uh, if we, if we do not cover it in today's session, it, it is a very small topic. So I can just share out you share share the deck with you guys, so you can just go through the deck and let me know if you have any questions on that. Okay. Uh, so without wasting any more time, we'll just start off now. So oh, first thing, so what is an AWR? okay so we all know that awr is nothing this is automatic workload repository okay so this is a oracle phenomenon which gives you a set of tables into which snapshots of system statistics are stored okay so uh, every database uh, of oracle has this uh, in place so this is from oracle 8 okay uh, and they are improving uh they are improved every release after oracle 8 oracle 9 oracle 9g 11g 10g then 11g so they have always improved this uh, awr okay so what how uh, this awr is so it, it actually captures a snapshot of every uh particular duration so we can configure that duration i will show you that okay so that particular duration and when we say a snapshot so uh, under the snapshot everything that your database is doing that will be captured so what are the queries are running on database how the database health is how much cpu that particular database instance is consuming what how many operations are going on that particular instances which sqls are running which are updating everything which sessions are open to that database system everything that will be uh come that will be completed on everything that will be in the snapshot that will be stored okay so now uh it this process uh it's it's a, it takes a cumulative data from two snapshots okay so whenever we are taking a report awr report like okay, let's be when we are, whenever we are seeing that take me an awr report from 8 a.m to 9 a.m right so what oracle is actually doing because it is capturing it in forms of snapshot right so it will have a data for, for uh, 8 to 830 or whatever snapshot we are configured so minimum is 30 minutes to maximum we have a day or more than that so uh, it takes this uh, cumulative data from the higher end of your snapshot to the slower end so it, it is subtract from the higher to the lower and it represents that data to the uh, screen okay so so this statistics that you are getting from you know representation from higher to end uh higher to minus uh 
lower snapshot it will give you the exact amount of uh, cumulative figures that how many sqls were running in a particular duration and what was the statistics on what was the health of your total database at that point of time okay so it's so uh, advanced version of your old stats pack okay so before oracle ati it was uh, old stats pack so then they had turned it to awr okay so this has been automated and made integral to the oracle's automated tuning process so uh, after awr that uh, then came that eddm report so in eddm actually in oracle you uh, awr uh, sorry in awr oracle tells us what are the performance bottlenecks what are the issues okay in eddm so eddm oracle tells us what is not an issue okay so you may be you may be able to find out that particular things in awr is they are saying so it may be an issue but uh, you also you also need to check the eddm for the respective interval so eddm will tell that tell that these are not the issues okay we will see a snapshot of eddm if time permits okay so let's uh, go to the detailed uh, analysis of your uh, awr sections okay so this is a just figure i got from oracle which actually sh shows that how your awr report is uh, you know generated and how the snapshots are stored so you can see at the right side uh, this this is the uh, uh, edm find top problems and below that you see this uh, particular data awr data has been uh, collected from in form of snapshot so snapshot one two three so it also has the historical data okay uh, and you can see this v dollar table so these are all the important tables for oracle you might have uh, heard about or you might have used all the v dollar session tables right so this uh, table stores the oracle database history so same like that uh, any operating system has its system users and its system files <clears throat> similarly for any database we have these system tables which starts with v dollar okay so all the uh, tables uh, will be stored from their uh, history to the uh, AWR database snapshot till eight days and whatever the history you have configured. Okay, and this can be represented whenever you take a snapshot. Uh, this can be represented in form of a AWR report. So you can see there are only uh, this background and foreground processes. All this goes to this, uh, but you need to uh, make sure that there are only uh, foreground processes that uh, count us for this report. We will see that in the upcoming slide. Okay, so the, uh, before we start, there are a few tips that how you are going, how you should generate the AWR and you know, how how it should be processed with the analysis. So uh, there are few this few tips. So we'll just go through it. So collect multiple AWR. Okay, so why why do you collect the multiple AWRs? So the reason is uh, uh, to analyze any or to comment on any database performance or uh, analyze any database performance issues. We need to be sure whether this particular database is behaving same as in the uh, previous condition, or it, or at least it is having some kind of problem. Okay, so uh, so this particular phenomena same we applied with uh, heap dumps, straight dumps, right? We used to take three. So uh, whenever a system is idle, whenever there is a no issue, so for that we call a good AWR report. Okay, so before any issue occurs, database is stable. Uh, there is there are no much activities on the database, and it's good that we take one AWR report. <clears throat> In meantime, whenever everything load test is running, we can say database is uh, properly loaded and it is still functioning well. At that meantime, we take one AWR report, and at the last, whenever we are facing uh, some issues, whenever we see that something is crashed, some database CPU is up, or some my maybe some reason is there which is causing uh, issues to the uh, you know application at that time we take a awr report and we compare all these three awr report to just find out what is actually the issue okay we'll come to that uh, in subsequent sections now stick to the particular time this is a very important uh, phase whenever a database is concerned okay because most of the time now databases uh, are in rack format so uh, entire server uh, database server will be there and they you will have just a simple database instance so as the database server is shared you it may happen that some other uh, activity on some other instance may cause cpu degradation for your instance right so you need to 
make sure that you are taking the database snapshot or to, you're taking the AWS snapshot within the specific database and specific time slot okay so that is also an important uh, thing then split the large AWS report into the smaller reports okay so why this is important uh, we know that we can get AWS for one hour two hours or entire 24 hours duration but why this is not uh, a good idea of to analyze is we already understood that AWR, uh, you know, it causes, it takes higher level snapshot and subtracts the statistics from higher to the lower and it represents you that data in a cumulative format. Uh, so in, when we take this kind of uh, long duration snapshot, it will, uh, you know, attenuate, uh, that would be a more proper word. So it will attenuate all the data or all the things that you have gathered uh, the database whatever the spikes you made that might have been in uh, inside the in between in middle of the duration that will be attenuated and you won't get this that particular uh, problematic area in the report right in, in the similar fashion you can uh, you can compare this analogy to your response time right why we report uh, 90 percent 90th percentile why we report 99th percentile uh, and why don't we report average because average gets attenuated any spikes uh, in between that will be attenuated uh, when you're reporting average right so we go for 99 similarly when we are taking a double report for a larger duration it does not necessarily uh, involve the problematic area because it is attenuated okay so next thing uh, for rack take each instance individual report now this is a very important thing so first you need to understand which oracle database you're working on whether it is in a rack format so rack is nothing but a set of uh, database instances in, under a single server okay so you need to uh, you need to have a separate awr for uh, your database instance and you need to have a separate awr for entire rack okay so you will be able to identify whether your particular uh, problem or your particular database uh, performance issue is uh, really related to your database instance or it is due to some other database instances consuming more cpu or consuming more ios memory you are uh, you are left with a few ios and everything so right so we need uh, for rack you need to take your specific separate of your database instance take an awr and then analyze okay uh, then use ash also okay so most of the time people only relies on awr and uh, they analyze AWR and depending on AWR, they just give uh, some information, whatever they analyze up to it. But it is always advisable if there is a problem, if there is a suspicion of having a database issue, you must go you, through AWR, ADDM, and ASH, all three reports. Okay. So, why ASH? So, ASH is nothing, ASH is a report which, uh, you know, which contains all the active sessions. So this uh, this is for a uh, it it takes it from the session history table and it contains it and all the active sessions at that particular point of time. Why it is important? Uh, because whenever you are analyzing an AWR and you found out some particular queries or some particular session user session which is actually hung up or which is actually querying a lot. So uh, to cross reference it with this ASH, you can find out is that section really active right there are uh, some there is there is some uh, phenomena we call of cursor sharing right so whether that particular session is being shared sharing the cursors or not so this all this kind of information you need to cross verify to find out whether this particular issue is uh, related to this session only or not okay then last thing is that you are increase the retention period okay so we have this historical data in uh, our oracle enterprise manager and we should uh, increase that retention period to uh, find out some particular good working instance or good working uh, time period to compare in a later point of time so it's always good to have an historical data right uh, just for the comparison purpose so let me just quickly show you before we go uh, let me just show you how this kind of you things you configure now you can see in the screen uh, this is oracle enterprise manager okay so i have installed oracle database on my laptop and i have configured one uh, simple instance for which we have uh, we are using a, a simple microservices application to generate a load but uh, unfortunately we are not able to get that much load that we have in our production instance and uh, you know various of uh, sql queries so instead, I will. I am using an another AWR report uh, for the illustration purpose. 
uh, okay so before that i will just show you the basics okay so this this now goes to the oracle site okay let me just go back okay so now you can see this is the home uh, this is the home page of my oracle enterprise manager in this oracle enterprise manager i get uh, the basic information of what is my uh, database on my server uh, how many database instances are there how is the uh, host cpu and risk uh, sql response time so th these are the few basic charts you can see at this this state okay you can also control this uh, instances from here you can see these buttons like shutdown blackout and you you just you you get all the properties for the uh, for your database right so as of now i have already only one instance configured on this which is a, a oracle instance only orcl i have named it orcl and i am using that for a simple uh, microservices application that i have deployed on tomcat okay so this is just a home page uh, whoever has not gone through or uh, whoever has not seen uh, how is oracle enterprise manager uh, gui or how, how it works uh, you can see over here uh, this is the uh, list of few on host cpu shared by another instance so you can see orcl and other right so these are uh, they, this is the only one instance now this is not causing uh, so much cpu right the, it is not using so there are no active sessions because there is nothing running on that particular instance right now okay so uh, we are interested in this tab performance you see at the at the top uh, cor left corner after home we have this performance tab right so once you click on this performance tab you get a system moving window okay system moving window is nothing but it represents you the things that are moving at the live you know with, with particular 15 second refresh time you can see at the right uh, right corner web data is your real time 15 second refresh okay now you can see here there is a known database host cpu which is actually uh, taking some uh, other activities right and so this uh, orient actually it is considering this particular server or particular machine that we have installed as a database server okay but we know that it is not just a database server it is uh, much more so uh, you get a segregation of non database host cpu everything right and load and cpu instance background cpu you if you scroll down you get the average active sessions so now you see at the 7 uh, 10 am so this time we have few uh, activity on the database right and uh, you can see concurrency you, you can see uh, system io cpu weight and uh, the cpu order right so these are the active sessions we have four round only uh, it is by default tech. okay furthermore going you, uh, the settings that we were talking about it is there so this is the setting button so once you click on this setting you get a window which shows that what should be your default uh, detail chart views right and what should you have the throughput all these graphs that you should have for your uh, uh, this window home uh, performance window right and show the 99th percentile line using the system moving window baseline okay so we, we, we don't want to change anything as of now here okay now let's just go to the uh thing you go to the window that we uh, where we can uh, generate the awr okay so before we before that i will also show you that how you actually monitor the live sessions okay so i have just click i'll just click on this uh top active you can see this additional monitoring links are provided below just click on this top activity link it will open a new session okay so now you can see the uh, he it has opened a session uh, which is actually listing me uh, the sql data okay so we there are actual sql the queries running right so you can see you just over to the sql id you can see what which what query it, it was running and at the right side you can see the sessions so whatever the sessions are running okay so this is now the live data uh, there is nothing running so you can cannot see anything so this is when the oracle instance started up okay so that's why you see some spikes up over there so uh, it is nothing but so you can see in the sql type call method 
so what is it is doing it is actually calling dbms stats gathering right so when when this oracle enterprise manager started it also retrieves some data from the database right so it also runs some queries on your oracle database so that uh, then that thing you are uh, you are looking at over looking over here okay so the thing that we are interested in uh, you, you can see this uh, uh, at the right side uh, we have the stop sessions and below uh, oh, up, just up over that we have this run ASH report okay so uh, this is the ASH report that uh, we were talking about uh, in the previous class okay uh, sorry in the previous slide so now just Hello, actually, am I, am I audible now? This is an availability tab which gives you know high availability console, and uh, in this console, you, you, you typically monitor the health of your database instance and all these things so this is a again a very uh, vast uh, topic of oracle enterprise manager it says that uh, i mean it has everything uh, inside the enterprise manager that you can uh, you know think of so all the things that you, you will get over here so run adm run ash now you see over here and uh, there are awr baselines that you can construct oh, yeah so this is here <clears throat> AWR baseline. So you can see this uh, particular templates are there uh, for AWR uh, baseline. Okay, so don't want to go to the AWR baseline. Uh, this is uh, a setting that we are talking about the intervals. So minimum is 30, and you can uh, retention days is uh, you can edit this setting, you can change it. Okay, so I, if I just click on edit, I can increase this uh, setting. But uh, it is provided that I have that much of uh, physical storage available and on that server and my server is capable of re retaining this period whatever or uh, whatever i'm saying okay or si system snapshot interval so uh, i just take out for the 30 minutes minimum you can go till down till 10 minutes but it is good to have 30 minutes of interval because 10 minutes will be very uh you know in in that case oracle has to work a lot because it will having have save a snapshot in every 10 minutes so okay so one 30 minutes an ideal thing to keep and uh, there is one more thing i just wanted to show you this collection level okay so there are two levels all and typical so uh, most of the time uh, typical will collect everything that we require for in an awr okay now just <clears throat> there is one more thing i just wanted to show you that historical awr that we uh, that we can generate uh, okay so if we click over here run awr report by snapshot and just click on here yeah so you can see these are the it is listed the snapshot and you you, you want to find out which snapshot we to start and the stop shots uh, stop snapshot okay so before that we need to identify which uh, particular period we want to generate it so we, we we will go to the system moving window okay in the performance tab system moving window and we will just try to find out which area particular uh, in the history we had this particular issue 
Okay, so we'll just go to the top activity. Okay, so we, you see here view data real time. So uh, just scroll it down and you just click on historical. Okay, so once you click on historical, you see uh, it, it it shows you data from the uh, past eight days because we have configured to have a retention snapshot of eight days, right? In the AWR panel, so you can see this there there is particular uh, uh, in this diagram. You can see this is a issue area where you have few queries running, right? Okay, so we will just go to this peak. Okay, so there are some SQLs are running at this point of time. Okay, so, so say like in there select some use. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so we can use this particular uh, time, uh, time, uh, time slot. Okay, so, so when it is, so just August 16, 6.30 p.m. So what you can do is uh, you just uh, left click on your mouse cursor and you can just try to get the system window refreshed okay so it <clears throat> it gives you the start time exactly 16 august 2019 6 44 okay so this uh, you can use this time to generate an awr report okay so before that we will just go to the sections and we will see uh, <clears throat> what are the different things that in a awr report are there okay so this is the first uh, header of your <clears throat> awr report so i will show you that awr report first <clears throat> that we are using it <clears throat> sorry okay so i have downloaded one uh, my uh, awr report from my uh, one of the my old project okay you can see this uh, report over here and i've used the same report for explaining you the all the things right so uh, in the slide you can see <coughs> sorry <coughs> so this is the top section you get workload repository report for so what what is all the things that you have in this report okay guys so what we can do is in meantime i have also started the tomcat so let's just start a simple test so we will able to generate a load on this uh, demo application or that we have not the demo application this is the the microservices application that kumar has uh, provided and uh, we can use that application to at least have some queries and i will show you some runtime uh, uh, system moving windows and how this uh, th th that is going runtime okay i just have to open one script i prepared yeah so request okay <clears throat> okay so there is one uh, particular uh, microservices application that kumar has given so in that uh, there are multiple tables and multiple employees players school you know, uh, this kind of things are there. There you can actually get the data of schools, and you can add it to the employees. You can add it. Or you can update. You can delete. <clears throat> okay, so this is a, a microservice, uh, and it is actually using the Oracle database. So now we will uh, we will load this. So 500 users are there. Just to 100 seconds, and we'll let it run forever. Okay. Get graph. Okay. Okay, so it is running now. So let me just uh, show you if there is any activity on uh, the Oracle. So real time refresh 15 seconds. okay so uh, you will you will get you will see some activity happening over here in meantime okay so uh, till that time we just go to the sessions and let we will let it run in the background and once we are back we will generate again one awr uh, from this interval 
and we will see that how oh, these things are uh, compared to the previous AWR report that we are using. Okay, so the top header of your AWR report gives you uh, most some basic details like right? so it has your database name database id so i'm just flagged it out because you know i don't want to get in the uh, this nsa nda clause okay so this is my the database uh, instance report uh, sorry the AWR report file of one of my old project so okay so i have uh, you can see this uh, this particular section informs you few basic things okay so what what are the things you should look for here is cpu cores sockets what the time it was taken startup time of database it's not the uh, uh, time when you take the snapshot it is the time when your database started okay uh, how many instances there whether it is a oracle rack or not so it is not a rack it is a simple dedicated database server which has only one instance okay and it is started at 8 july 17907 okay now uh, the configuration of server this is aix system 64 bit 176 cpus 22 cores no sockets okay and 122 gb uh, 120 gb of memory okay now below that you have snap id Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. So I was talking about that first thing that you are uh, you want to go further, and I mean you want to decide whether you should analyze this AWR report or not, is to check this elapsed time and DB time. Okay. So if this elapsed time is uh, is greater than your DB time, you don't need to analyze your AWR. There is no possible database issue that can be caused and uh, that can that is causing your performance okay and then uh, why why we are saying it uh, so it is illustrated at below you can see uh, the different terms are there right so db time and total db time and what is everything so this uh, just understand the information in this particular section we have so we get snap id snap time we get the sessions uh, how many sessions were running at the snaps started and uh, how many sessions were running at the snap ended right and we have that cursors per session at the right side right okay now uh, let's just understand this uh, particular phenomena db time okay so this this is the thing that we will be using uh, more often uh, for the upcoming slides so what is db time is actually as a total time in database calls uh, by foreground sessions which includes cpu time io time and non idle wait time okay so keep in mind that all the db time that you get in awr uh, is all for the foreground processes or foreground sessions it does not include the background the db time right 
so uh, what is total db time it is a sum of db time for all active sessions okay so db time is a, a total time in in the database uh, in the database calls by foreground sessions which includes cpu io and non idle weight plus and the total db time is your sum of all these active sessions db time so db time you can consider it as a response time for the user it, it can be compared as a response time right so how it goes for a particular request and how it comes same way then the next thing is this what active session is okay so active session is nothing but sessions that currently spending time in the database call right uh, which is accuring the db time okay so uh, there is one uh, particular thing that we calculate so what how many average active sessions are there so there is a formula you can see uh, on the screen the average active sessions can be calculated by uh, dividing db time with the elapsed time so if you divide this uh, 2074.39 minus or divide by 60.5 uh, 60.15 minutes so you will get every average active sessions okay so uh, this is the uh, the last time uh, given notes uh, db time is greater than elapsed time will mean that the sessions were active on database concurrently okay so there is some uh, some kind of investigation which you know triggers so there are some sessions which were active concurrently which may cause an issue of performance right if your db time is not greater than elapsed time this count will be zero uh, or close to zero so average active sessions if there are no active sessions there is no point of uh, analyzing the AWR report okay now just go to the second section okay so this is the summary uh, the load profile okay so instant summary let me just show you the again again in the AWR so now we see that there are some activities are happening over here I cannot see any query from the dummy application that we are using. So you can see this three dollar session fix. So it is this is uh, actually the database snap. The Oracle is actually trying to get the snap uh, information from the database. Okay, now we can see this bars are over there. So so this orange is nothing but commit application concurrency okay so you can see just hover to this query you can see this select employee id and this is the query that uh, is actually triggered by our test okay so what we can do is we'll just try to get one awr uh, for that particular uh, duration so this is 739 now uh, so this duration is between 739 to 744 Go to another tab. Okay, so today six fifty nine is the first. So it, the next snap snapshot is not yet generated because we have just started. So we will have to wait. So first snapshot we are we are seeing is six fifty nine the latest. Okay, so we will just wait for some time. Till then I can show you the Oracle report I have. Okay, so report summary that is that what we are talking about load profile okay so this section now uh, it, it includes uh, another information like db cpus okay so what is db cpus and what is uh, what are the different uh, different fields that this report uh, this particular section has we'll see that now okay so the load profile this uh, in this load profile everything is just your average that is uh, all the things are included like average active sessions and then your db cpu logical and physical reads user call you can see over here reads writes hard passes logons rollbacks transactions everything is there in this load profile table so <clears throat> where you need to actually uh, focus on is this physical reads writes parses which are hard pass and uh, ratio pass ratio right to the transaction ratio okay so hard passes you can see there are only 18 hard passes per second 
okay then uh, passes how many schools are actually getting for passing this is 107 uh, 1709 so this is again a high count okay next thing that we should be looking at is physical write and physical read okay why because physical whenever we are talking about physical read that means it is actually accessing the disk okay which actually causes to have a io user io and system io so this is a uh, important thing that we should look over here the so similarly you can see this write io request and read io request right so write io request is 70.75.5 per second and read are more than that <clears throat> okay and the next column you see per transaction how much it is okay so now uh, from this particular table first uh, this table we get a basic idea that how how much my db time is 34.5 uh, second my db time has been spent uh, db cpus per second is used is 6.5 and uh, physical reads physical writes and now i uh, i can just uh, you know come to conclusion that there are some hard passes are going on so uh, before i you know come to conclusion that how many hard passes are there i need to look out that uh, if the hard parsing ratio it is greater than two or three percent of the total parses whatever the total parsing is happening if that hard parsing is to, uh, greater than two or three percent it is an issue because hard pass will happen uh, the, you cannot uh, avoid completely so but it should not be greater than two to three percent okay so that this ratio of, of your hard passes to the passes, it, it will tell you that how often your sql is you know uh, getting fully passed okay so whenever you, we are seeing the full passing of sql statements uh, it, it it is always having a negative in, impact on your uh, application performance because it has to go through everything so, uh, syntax check everything and going to the database checking if it is available in shared uh, session or not if it's not then uh, try to find out the uh, particular field or particular table right then the next thing that we should look for in this particular table is rows per sort okay so now uh this rows per sort can also be reviewed there so to see the, if the large sorts are occurring so now in this particular table we where is the sorting so there is no sorting listed now now this section can help you to at least uh, in the load testing in whatever the load testing we are doing so you can just compare but this particular section with baseline okay so first thing that uh, whenever we are comparing the awr is to compare this load profile with the another uh, awr that we have a good or bad okay going to the next section so okay so this is in it is again explaining everything so what redo size db cpu logical user reads user queries passes hard passes stop pass. so redo size is nothing but the main source of redo uh, in roughly descending is insert update and delete okay so high redo figures means that either lots of new data is being saved into the database or existing data is undergoing a lot of changes so this is the first uh thing the redo size so 482.393 uh, redo has been uh, bytes has been done per second per transaction it is that it's it's already high so logical read you can see it is already high so that can be an possible issue right so db cpu this is the cpu that we have listed over here 6.5 okay so how what is this db cpu it is the amount of cpu time spent on user calls okay it's it's similar to the data db time that we call right the db uh, amount of time spent for db in in the database for serving the sql query in the similar fashion the amount of cpu time spent for particular user call okay okay so it does not include the background processes again okay, we need to you know uh, keep in mind this does not include the background process so that's why we need to take an, another uh, awr reports and try to find out if there is any background processes which are impacting uh, impacting the uh, database performance right because this awr this db cpu and db time it will not include any background process okay so the uh, total values that we are in microseconds now 
in our case we have eight cores and so we can potentially use eight seconds of cpu time per second so, uh, so we we all we already know that how it is working right how does it work so a one wall clock cycle how how many cores you have so that you can use those many cycles cpu cycles okay so db cpu's ratio is 1.9 per second right so in reporting that we are do, uh, in reporting the system that is using 1.9 seconds of cpu of the potential eight seconds per second so we it can go up to the eight seconds per second but it is now using 1.9 second okay so it is not a cpu bound process so when this particular thing is high right the, the uh, db cpu per second in that case in in this in this case it is very 6.5 right so uh in 6.5 we can see this there are 22 cores right so it it, it can go beyond that 6.5 but it is not cpu bound in it from this dpcp we can you can calculate that so this uh eight core and this this is for the current system that current uh, laptop i'm using so this data is for this current system so once we generate the awr with this available we will be uh, we'll be able to see this 1.9 okay now the logical reads we all you know that what is read and what is write so read and write is the basic operation of your database right so logical read is nothing but your consistent gates plus db block gates which constitutes to the total logical reads okay so logical and physical reads when we combine in uh, uh, it will uh, impact on your it uh, it gives an impact of measuring how many ios are there physical and logical okay so uh, ios are also important uh, uh, in database because it also you know gives uh, sql by logical reads and all these things uh, you can get in the section sql by logical reads okay so if the particular sql is actually trying to uh, access uh, data or is is trying to have more logical reads you can get that sql in sql by logical reads section okay next is your user queries number of user queries generated then passes the total of number of passes hard and soft hard passes soft passes right hard passes we all know that they are requiring a complete new pass of an sql statement that is hard pass and soft passes it's already done okay okay so then uh, physical reads so similar to the logical read physical yes. read yes. if yes yes i know you want to please um hard pass also i am not able to hear you sano can you please explain the hard pass and soft pass please okay you want to understand hard pass and soft pass sure yes so basically uh, whenever we are saying uh, sorry so basically whenever we are seeing a hard pass is happening that means a particular sql whenever an sql statement is being run uh, through the database which actually goes through the entire process completely so it will go through the syntactical checks it will go through the uh, compiling it will go through the finding out and then running okay so whenever a hard pass is happening that means actually it is uh, creating a new session or creating a new cursor in your database and then <clears throat> uh, running the statement or uh, doing the operation whatever an sql has supposed to do right whenever we are talking about the soft pass so soft pass when soft pass happens soft pass uh, so there is a particular sql which is running for a long time right same sql is running for a long time so what oracle will do is oracle will store that sql plan in the cache oracle database cache right we have sga and pg there are two uh, different things in a oracle database right so it will store it in cache and when the next time that particular sql hits so it will automatically identify from the cache uh, and the buffer and that session that particular cursor or particular session for that sql that will be it will be taken from that buffer so it will not go to the entire parsing cycle so oracle does not have to identify what i have to do so parsing means it will actually try to read out the statement and it will try to identify which column need to access which database uh, we need to access what is the index and everything that is to read whatever there is in an sql statement but 
whenever it is a, a long running query it will auto oracle will automatically uh, keep that queries plan or keep that passing in the uh, buffers or stations or we, we say that so that's why uh, when whenever you are doing a soft pass it, it it actually consuming very less resources than a hard pass because oracle does not has to have to work on all these things right to identify which operation is sql is being performing right it's clear now yes yes that's clear thank you okay so now we were talking about the physical gates right so uh, buffer gate and uh, the same similar to the logical reads if the oracle does not find the data in buffer cache it will go to the physical reads now it's again you can compare this analogy to the parsing whenever a new sql is coming and it is hitting to the uh, database if that particular sql is new and it is not finding in your uh, ag or the shared global area it will go to the parse again, right? Similarly, if a particular SQL has requested, requested some data, which is being you know uh, accessed newly, and if data is not available in your buffer cache, then it will try to read it from the physical disk or physical block, okay? Which will cause a physical read, right? So when it will increase the physical read count to one. So that means the buffer gate is less expensive than physical read because you know buffer uh, whenever when we whenever we are speaking of buffer, it is a live component. So we can compare it as a RAM of your uh, of your system's RAM and your system's disk, right? So whatever the applications are running, so they will usually store that data on RAM because it is easily accessible, right? And you can uh, it it improves the application performance, but if the ram is full if that particular data application is looking for it's not there in ram it will try to read it from the disk right same fashion uh, the physical reads are not good uh, very high physical reads uh, are not good for no uh, in a in report okay so if uh, what do you do if the physical reads are high if it is high you just go to this section sql by physical reads so it will list out the sqls which are actually causing so much physical reads right so it will help you to pointing out which is which are the scales are uh, the uh, causing this bottleneck now there is next uh, next section uh, section which gives you executes sql so it is just the uh, how many executes are uh, executing per second okay if it is a very high number of sqls that is been executing per second so then it's a red flag right okay so there is a next thing that user calls let me just again show you because we may lost in this uh, see user calls over here so this particular example that we have we have taken it's 398.5 user calls per second okay and that executes we are, we are talking about it is below here executes sql so 93229 sql per second so it's it's uh, slightly alarming right so these are very high skills per second we are executing right so we need to check we need to go that particular session and we need to see what is actually uh, how many executes uh, skills are getting executed similarly uh, user calls how many user calls are there happening per second okay so number of calls from a user uh, process into a database like pass which is executed so everything uh, every operation is a an user call right so it's a very useful piece of information because uh, it, it says the scale for the statistics like uh, so how many hard passes should go how many user commits and all these operations will be uh, termed as a user call okay so whenever uh, a query is being executed right so uh, uh, sorry so whenever a particular uh, whenever database is executing some uh, uh, same thing uh, multiple times per user call right so if a particular user call is having multiple fetches multiple executes and multiple uh, parsing so it, it is an issue of context switching right so uh, we already understood that what is context switching in uh, very previous classes right so uh, a pl sql function uh, for example it's, it's an sql statement which is called too often uh, because of a bad sql plan 
in this cases uh, we need to go in the loop into the section sql ordered by executions so we will come to this sections in subsequent but i am just giving uh, so i have just tried to list it out if this particular section is having high uh, we are observing high so when we need to go to the further analysis okay i will share uh, share you guys this day uh, in a in a pdf format so you will be it will be able you will be able to uh, refer this day and uh, try to analyze your awr okay so next thing is your logons manage and uh, block changes so logons is nothing but how many times uh, it is happening number of logons so how many new connections are being established to the database because a and always establishing a new connection in database is expensive for uh, database performance all right then there is block changes so number of blocks modified during the sample interval that means block changes is nothing but uh, how much block information is updated right is there an update query insert query delete query so all these uh, queries are changing the information so in that case there is a block change okay the next section we have is our instance efficiency percentage okay so you can see this is uh, already given as target 100% so that means it has to be 100% it should be approaching the 100% you can see instance efficiency percentage target 100% so so whatever the number in this particular section you are looking at it should be near to the 100 if it is not then we need to analyze it okay <clears throat> so it's a rule of thumb always minimize the number of hard passes right this is this reduction is the benefits of minimizing cpu overhead overhead uh, spent performing costly password so we already uh, we already seen that so uh, every ratio in this particular table should reach to the 100 percent okay so what is in memory sort okay so here you have this in memory sort it is 100 percent what does it mean it means the percentage of times sorting operations are happened in memory okay and without that these are happening in memory with, other than having it in a temporary table space or the disk okay so if in memory shortage is percentage is less than 90 okay in it case in, indicates that your paging size or uh, sorry the pga size or the sort area size has an issue so you need to change this pga aggregate target at the uh, or you need to give this if you don't have access to the uh, database uh, instance or configuring database instance you need to uh, mention this finding to the dbas and ask them to change this pg pga aggregate size okay similarly if soft per soft passing percentage okay you can see this soft pass percentage now it is 98.95% it's close to 100 okay if uh, it shows how often session is used in sql statement that is already in the shared pool okay and how it can use an existing version of that statement okay so soft passing uh, uh, being low it indicates that bind variable and versioning issue okay so now this is an important point over here that bind variable and versioning issues okay so with 99.25% of the soft passing means that about 0.75% of cpu is uh, used for hard passing so in this case soft pass is our 98.95% that means the remaining percentage of cpu is being used for the hard pass okay so low hard pass is always good for us so always try to check if the soft pass per percentage is on higher side okay so before we go to the next uh, sessions i'll just want to quickly explain this bind variable and versioning because uh, you will be hearing this word quite often in the sub subsequent uh, subsequent sections because most of the issues are uh, in awr are related to this so bind variable and versioning so uh, is anybody who is attending uh, have an idea about bind variable and uh, uh, how this how, what is a bind variable and Our versioning in SQL Dart. Anyone, please, can you just uh, raise me? Uh, someone is knowing anything, so I can explain in that manner. Okay, so I think uh, no one actually knows what is actually binding in SQL. Okay, 
so let me just quickly give you this idea what is this binding okay so before we just i just want to see if our uh, skills are being fitted or not okay 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 so people let's see what is binding okay i'll just quickly open the notepad okay i will use a simple query that uh, we have here I am not able to access the query. Okay, so now we can see. I've just accessed this query. Okay. Okay. So what is binding is so whenever uh, we already know that there is soft passing, there is a. Uh, uh, is oracle is saving the sql plan in the buffer pool so you know to reuse everything so what is binding is so whenever a particular uh, sql query is uh, executed in oracle now right now we can see that i will write a simple query right select employee number no employee here employee score id equal to 1 okay so this is a simple query which which is actually trying to fetch one employee from uh, employee number from a table and uh, with with employee id 1 then again there is some another uh, query which is generating uh, which is trying to fetch an employee with employee id 23 okay so right now if you can see the query is the same but the information or whatever whatever the variables that we are pa passing to them it is different right so employee id is 23 now employee id is 1 so this these are two different queries because it has to different information if there is another same query is being executed okay so that will be uh, that will be your same query right so the first query and the third query is your same query right so in that case oracle will not have to use anything Uh, because the same uh, for this particular same query we already have that by uh, this this query plan is already stored in the session but what happens is uh, when whenever the same sort of query is is being executed but it has a slightly different information so there is a 23 instead of 1 okay so instead of giving you the id or, or the employee number where is employee id is 1 so uh, it has to give you the employee id or on the employee number where the employee id is 23 right so what oracle does is oracle will bind it what it what does does it mean bind it so instead of using one it will use id underscore number so it will bind this value to a variable and it will pass this as a variable so the same thing you can observe in the above query Okay, so select employee 
numbers dot id as id one underscore zero employee zero dot age as age two underscore zero. You can see so all the variables, all the things that are been over here is binded to a particular different variable. So id one underscore zero underscore one uh, underscore it's a variable. It is a bind variable, right? Now how the versioning comes in pictures are you able to get it or uh, are you guys able to understand it please let me know because i may not be able to explain you this uh, in that uh, uh, in a, how a dba should explain it but as i am just trying to give you a basic concept thanks sir okay so whenever uh, we we see this particular same query is happening so same query is being executed so what oracle will do is it will try to bind the last variable so whatever the variables are there in the as well it will bind to a variable it will create a variable in it is saying id1 underscore zero underscore so it is a bind variable for uh, select this query so th there are multiple variables employee age is there then employee department is there this employee name is there right so department as department three underscore zero employee name as name four underscore zero right so this is a uh, this is the binding why oracle does is it, it, it tries to improve the performance and store the space right because this uh, two queries may be may, may be different for v uh, for oracle for machine right but the same plan they, they involve the same plan we are what we are doing we are just selecting an employee number from an employee table where we are looking for a particular employee id right both of the queries are same Thus, the different part is the parameter or the argument that we are passing to that way. So Oracle will do a smart work over here. It will bind that arguments to the variable that will be called as a bind variable. And most of the issues you see in the data that it, it, it is due to the bind variable. Now, uh, to have this particular by Oracle to use this bind variable properly, it is the job of DBA or uh, the database developers to use the PLSQLs or whatever they are using properly. So if they can they can also expose this uh, that which things that you, that can be binded. Now I was talking about the versioning. So what happens when a similar query comes, but there is some kind of change. So instead of uh, employee ID, now just uh, let's say just it is reverse now. So it is uh, looking from the same table, but instead of employee ID, now it is looking for employee name. Right. So again, it is another different query for me or for the machine to understand. Right. So ID underscore. So it will be again. It will be again binded to the a different variable in inside the Oracle. But when again uh, when the same SQL will comes with employee ID, it will uh, it will increase it to the uh, version one, right? Because if I used to, uh, if if I try to use both of the these queries together, one and employee underscore name equal to xyz okay so now this is another this is a new query right but my oracle already has a plan for this query and this query right employee number for or employee where employee id already have uh, where employee name is this that that uh, i already have so what Oracle will do is Oracle will try to version this query or version this plan and it will uh, increase this version and it will say it is a version one. So now, now next time when this kind of queries will be uh, there to execute, it will first try to evaluate the bind variables. How many bind variables are there? So if there is in this in this particular case, there is only one bind variable. In this case, there is only one bind variable. In this case, we will have two bind variables, right? One one will be for this ID and then another will be for the uh, name. So I underscore number will be there and there here will be your ID underscore name. So this kind of bind variable, right? So in that case, Oracle will directly use this version one of that uh, past this case. 
okay so this is how your binding variables and uh, versioning works in your oracle okay now just go back to the uh, table Okay, so that's understood. So you uh, you will be hearing or you will be uh, seeing this bind variable and versioning issues a lot in this uh, deck. Okay. Hey, hey, um, uh, this binding stuff is it is it done by the DBs or it is done by the by the Oracle itself when one of those queries are rep repeating? Yeah. Is it, is so it this is binding? actually this yeah. is. Uh, this is an uh, uh, work of both so dba and oracle so dba will expose the fields or dba should write an sql query properly that can or that oracle can use to bind where variables okay so uh, if you have if you want some details on that i will uh, i will share you the details i have one sample code which uh, illustrates the binding variables i will share you Okay, because uh, this uh, particular AWR analysis session is very lengthy and there are no actual practical things to show. I will I have prepared one PDF of this entire deck, and after this session, I will share this PDF with uh, all you guys. So you will be able to you know go through it and the sessions or the things that we may miss, uh, you can cover it. Okay. Okay. So what is the non uh, pass CPU? So that. We, we were talking about in the earlier section right instance efficiency percentage so it should be again goes to the hundred percent so how your oracle database uh, is utilizing the cpu right so if it is uh, state exec it is using to uh, utilizing the cpu mostly for statement execution but not for passing right so if there is a percentage of non pass cpu is near 100% that means uh, the particular uh, database is uh, performing idle right ideal sorry not idle ideal right if, if this percentage is coming lower you need to worry about it right because uh, if the non percentage the non pass cpu is low that means uh, actually cpu power is spending somewhere else which is not the databases a uh, purpose right so yeah, this is one uh, uh, particular uh, important thing then execute to pass percentage okay so now what is this particular parameter or what is this particular field so execute to pass percentage it will show you that how often a past sql statement are reused without repassing so this is also an important thing right we, we we say that there are soft passes that means uh, sql has uh, is not to be passed again right but how many time you are you are actually using that pass already passed so, so execute to pass percentage will give you that right if it is 100 percent that means you are properly using your buffers and properly using your sql statements right that means once your sql statement is passed it is using 100 times or next 1000 calls are there they are using the same pass right so if the number of executes increases while the pass call remains same so this ratio will up right which is the ideal case for our uh, database so when this number is low parsing is consuming cpu and shared pool latching okay so this if this number is low that means your shared pool is not properly configured and and there is a lot of hard parsing going on okay then there is next thing is uh, pass cpu to parse elapsed percentage okay so give the ratio of cpu time spent to the parse sql statement right so what is the parse cpu to parse elapsed just if you just try to read it uh, read the fields uh, with proper uh, with proper uh, acknowledgement it you will try to, you will be able to understand what it is trying to say okay so parse cpu to parse elapsed the ratio of the cpu time spending for parsing sql statements okay now this if this is low okay this means it there could be a passing problem so you again need to check the bind variable and shared pool sizing right if it is low that means uh, some bottleneck is related to the passing okay so library cache is there this things that we need to uh, first investigate shared pool and library cache 
then there is buffer heat percentage so this should be always 100% or more than that okay what is buffer heat percentage it measures how many times a required block was found in memory rather than having to execute an expensive read operation on disk okay so it is already there in buffer that means it can be already uh, already can be accessed right away okay now there is buffer no wait percentage it indicates the percentage of time data buffers were accessed directly without any wait time right so this ratio relates to the request that are, uh, that a server makes a server process makes for a specific buffer and it is the percentage of those requests in which requested buffer is in immediately available okay so all the buffer types uh, will be included in this uh, statistics so buffer no wait so all uh, types of buffers will be included so if this particular ratio is low you need to check buffer wait statistics there is again a section in the wr buffer wait statistics okay then there is a library heat percentage so similarly to buffer we have a library heat percentage okay it shows the percentage of time in sql or a pl sql call it, that found in the shared pool okay so library heat percentage is great when it is near to 100% if it is below 95% you need to investigate the size of shared pool okay so if it is below 95% that means you need to share increase the shared pool size in it cursor sharing to be shared to be forced shared pool re reserve size should be increased or it should be too small uh, it may be too small so you need to increase it inefficient sharing of pascal so these are all the things that i have listed out uh, for everything so that's why i have taken uh, so much time to you know prepare this deck so it has everything you need for an oracle uh, aw analysis okay so there is latch hit percentage it should be again 100% if it is below 99% you need you have a latch problem tune the latch to reduce the cache uh, cache contains so read or no wait so whether the read log buffer has sufficient size or not okay now the next section is your foreground events so top 10 so in most of the reports you see uh, which are generated by in the in form of text or in form of uh, uh, at text reports uh, from the old unix boxes you will see this uh, top 5 for round events or top 10 okay so this can be configured when you are actually generating the awr from the unix boxes but usually when you generate the awr from that uh, oracle enterprise manager it will give you the top 10 for round events <clears throat> so what it has uh, you can see this section is it, it's also critical because uh, all that events that might constitute the bottleneck for system so all the foreground events are listed over here so in in this particular example you can see you, you should always look for the top event what is so db file sequential read now and the wait class user io so this is important thing so if whenever you are, you you are seeing high higher activity or higher sessions being spent on user io concurrency and application it is an issue okay so this is a candidate for analysis this is for this particular thing we should analyze so right now in this table you can see wait class as user io there is concurrency also below there is the concurrency for some library cache and there is again another application wait class is also listed which is for nq rule of contention so there are 99 waits for particular uh, 99 uh, waits are happening in foreground session which are actually containing uh, the rule locks that means which 99 sessions are there which are waiting to have a rule lock to process or to upgrade the data okay then uh, this is total uh, wait time in seconds now we will see how this uh, statistics we uh, you know we will uh, how do we come to uh, come to the conclusion whether this particular is a problem or not okay now this there there could be a significant weight that there are not listed here so again foreground weight events there is again weight event statistics another section which is the listed in the awr okay so now again nqtx rule of condition this is the first thing if it is higher than 10% then we have to look into the root cause right so you will have to go to the segments by rule of weights and see what tables are getting locked 
and then we will have to see in which SQL ID these are used. So in our case, you can see and to TX rule of contention. So this is 99 and weight average millisecond is 18 point uh, 88 point 88,788 millisecond. So percentage degree time is 1.5. So it's okay. Right 1.5. So if it is 10 percent. Then or higher than that, we should go to the look uh, statements by whole of weights and try to find out the issue. Now DB file sequential read. So what is sequential read? It's an index bound read. Okay, so it is for it is followed by table read. Okay, so because it is going to the multiple indexes and it trying to read the gate the blocks and which blocks to you, you be fine. Okay, so if you say it's a very high average uh, example. Okay, so average is uh, very high, uh, hundred milliseconds or two hundred milliseconds. It means that you dis are slow, right? Then you have log file sync. Above 20 millisecond, we don't consider good number. So log file sync over here, you can see. Okay, so there is that, that is not listed. The event is not listed in foreground now. DB file scattered read. It is caused due to the FTS full table scan. Maybe because of insufficient indexes or unavailability of updated statistics. DB file scattered read. That is also not listed in your. Uh, yeah, it is there. So DB file scattered read. It is a user IO weight class. And it is uh, it is listed. OK, so if a DB file scattered reads are there, uh, that means a full table scan is happening, right? Uh, whenever uh, why full table scan happens, if the indexes are not properly used in that case uh, SQL Oracle will try to scan entire table instead of in a particular hashing value or particular uh, level it will scan the entire table so in that case uh, there will be a physical read activity which will uh, which will be performed again uh, impacting the performance so where you should uh, go and check it is a Segment statistics under segment statistics segments by physical read. We, it will give you the SQL query which are actually trying to access physical database. Then there is the next class, your concurrency weight class. Okay, concurrency weight class is also a not good class. And if it is high, it needs to be analyzed. Okay, concurrency weight class means there are multiple sessions concurrently waiting for uh, performing something. Okay, then there are direct path read temp or direct path read uh, write. So in, in the temporary databases, uh, it is read, read and write. So if it is high, that means your PGA parameter or sort area hash parameters have some problem. Then there is buffer busy weight. Okay, so it indicates that particular block is being used by more than one process at the same time. All right, so if uh, because uh, most of the time uh, Oracle will try to get the data from buffer that right? pass the SQL from buffer and if there are multiple concurrent sessions if they will allow, they will all try to get the data from buffer. So buffer busy weight will give how many times or how much time a particular session needs to wait for getting a data. Again if this uh, time is high that means your buffer size is low or your buffer uh, is, uh, your, your buffer is not properly performing right. Now, uh, NQ tracks a rule of contention again. So, uh, Oracle maintenance data consistency with the help of locking mechanism. So, we, this is just and try to give an example that how that contention happens and how uh, it works. So, uh, for any operation on any table, so uh, update, delete, insert. So, this operation Oracle will particularly lock one particular row. It will perform that operation and then it will release. Okay, similarly, the operations which uh, happens with our threads, right? And uh, in, in the same fashion, or the rule of contention will be uh, performed over here also. Okay, so whenever uh, Oracle, uh, after updating, deleting, or inserting, whenever a commit is issued, <coughs> it will be re it will release the lock. Okay, so once the lock is released, it is available for the next waiting event or uh, next waiting uh, process to acquire. 
right so this is also an important thing if you're uh, if you're finding a very high uh, roll of contentions that means there are uh, the stations are not properly released or the of processing or the operations are not properly uh, fed so a most common issue is over here is that commit is not used you are updating a block you are updating block again and again but there is no commit so unless and until there is a commit uh, that particular row lock will not be released for the next process right so <clears throat> there should be a commit uh, used for every transaction or every dml operation we are doing an oracle <coughs> sorry now there is a ANQ UL and TM contention. So uh, this actually locks executing the lock table command. Okay, so now uh, coming to the host CPU. Okay, so why this is important? So a high level of DB CPU uses in top and foreground events, or instance, a CPU percentage BC CPU. It does not necessarily mean that CPU is a bottleneck. Okay, so if you see in the top 10 foreground events you can see this dp cpu is listed this is an event okay so it is total wait time say showing 23.3 and percentage db time 18.7 so does do you does that mean that it is an issue no okay why so because uh, this example we can see db cpu is the highest consuming category in top 10 right so look at the whole cpu and instance cpu section so the key things to look at here percentage idle value okay and the percentage total cp right so percentage total cp over here is your 3.7 percent only right if the percentage idle is low and percentage total cpu is high so now percentage idle there is uh, it's in the uh, below section see percentage total is 3.7 and percentage idle is 84.9 it's very high so there is, it's it's not an issue so it's no cpu bottleneck for database right so, so otherwise if I high db cpu uses are there that means the database is spending a lot of time in parsing processing and have all the ios and everything so it is in this case in our case it's not a cpu issue not a cpu bottleneck okay this is some basic information that how you actually interpret the cpus so here actually cpu are uh, used as a threads right so whenever we are seeing that we are having 22 cores and eight threads per the core so the cpu number of core will be threads per core will be 176 you can see so there are 22 cores right and eight uh, a particular core has eight threads so 22 by 8 is 176 you can see this uh, cpu is 176 that means 22 cores by uh, each core is having eight threads like similarly what is load average it is the compared load average with cores very ideal thing is that a load average should be less than cores although this may not be happening and it may not be an issue also okay so load average uh, should be less than the course so you can see the course are 22 so load average is 35.9 is begin and its ending is 35.04 so it's not less now but it is not actually an issue right so percentage of idle cpu can be misleading as sometimes your percentage of idle can be 50 percent but your server is starving for cpu Okay, 50% idle means your cores are busy. You may have three threads, but you cannot run two processes concurrently on the same core. So all the percentage in this uh, in the AWR report is calculated based on CPU, which are actually threads, right? So how many number of cores? So here we have 22 cores. So we have 22, right? So that means in a one particular hour, or 160 minute hour we can have 16 multiplied by 22 is 1320 cpu minutes right and the total aw duration is our one hour right so 120 1320 into one is 1320 cpu minutes in total okay so you, it, it it may find you hard to understand but once you read it again you will uh, get all the things okay 
so next part is your cache size so it it, shares, it 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 gives the data of your or different cache how much is your buffer cache how much is your shared pool size okay so now if you see this buffer cache begin and end is same so 8k is block size then your shared pool size is 10.703 and it is increased a lot uh, uh, not a lot it is increased a bit for uh, to 10.710 mb right so uh, from oracle tng onwards uh, db servers are uh, doing automatic memory management same that we have for jbms right so it the pg and aj there are these two components of database so shared global area and then then there is a programmable global area right so uh, these are the uh, the we are we are deallocating memory assigned to the different components of aj and pg okay so due to this we can observe different sizes for buffer and shared pool at the beginning of an awr and at the end of the awr because it oracle automatically tunes it or, or, or oracle automatically increases the size if the requirement is higher okay next is your shared pool statistics okay now again so percentage of users if your memory uses percentage here begin and end is less than 85% that means your shared pool is oversized okay what is what do you mean by uh, having 85% of uh, less uses of shared pool that means your shared pool has maximum uh, higher size which is not been used right so if it is uh, too large like uh, 90% it could mean that your shared pool is small so now so in that case in our case it is using already all 92.60% and it is increased to the 92.95% that means uh, the shared pool size is a little bit small so we will also get this kind of recommendation in the awr return over below increase the shared pool size right okay next is your percentage sql executions greater than 1 so how many sqls are executed uh, more than once right so it is a percentage so this should be always near, near to the 100% okay so if your reuse is low that means if a particular percentage of sql is executing below 60 to 70 percent you may have a bind table or versioning issue right that means your the oracle has to calculate another uh, sql plan or it has to use another uh, shared pool for that particular sql right so uh, ideally all percentage this area should be as high or it should be 100 percent so now we see here is 86% so it's it's, it's still good it's uh, above 70% right then the next part is your memory for sql wait for execution so from the memory space allocated to cursors it shows how much percentage or which percentage has been used for the uh, cursors more than one what is begin and end so uh, begin and end is the snapshot begin and snapshot end so we take a uh, oracle report for the snapshot right uh, one is the start start time and there is uh, there is another end time right we already understood that uh, the statistics that are reported are cumulative and it uh, oracle subtracts the statistics from end to start and it will present it right so the begin means whenever the oracle snapshot has started the start time it was 92.60 and end means whenever the uh, oracle snapshot aws snapshot ended it is 92.95 the start time and end time if you are uh, taking it from 7 am to 8 am at 7 am the memory uses percentage were 92.90 uh, 92.60% and at 8 it was 92.95 like that <clears throat> now this is another important uh, section time model statistics which one we should consider you should consider both santosh so begin and end so both that's why i have i have written out uh, these things so both both should not be less than 85% because uh, this is the area total uh, i mean total time period we are trying to analyze right or for awr so both we should consider begin and end so uh, if if 
there is a drastically decrease or drastically increase between two that means in between there is an issue or in in between the time intervals there is something now for example you can see percentage of sql executions with sql greater uh, executions greater than one at begin it was 86.29 percent that means at the time when the snapshot was taken it was 86.29 percent uh, sqls were executed uh, more than once and at the end it was it reduced to 80.60 percent 66 percent that means at the towards the end the time when we took the uh, oracle snapshot the sql activity was not that much or the skills was not being uh, actively executed right so this both uh, we need to consider okay then this time mode statistics is again a very important thing so here uh, why it is important it it gives you the total time spent in the database so entire database what for the AWS report that we have generated this is the cumulative section <coughs> okay so uh, it is calculated by your aggregating the cpu time and wait time of all sessions okay so non idle user sessions already all the non idle okay so it will it will not include the idle sorry okay so it's, since it's cumulative of time of all or not other session it's possible that the time will exceed the actual wall clock time so most of the time in interviews or in in kind of you know uh, sessions you you might be uh, you might get this type of question that why db cpu time is uh, or why DP time is greater than the time you are, you are taking the you know, snapshot. If you are taking uh, 60 seconds, uh, 60 minutes of snapshot uh, for a player, why your DB time is more than that? So this is the reason because it's a cumulative time and it is calculated by aggregating the CPU time and wait time of all sessions, right? All the non-idle sessions okay so now we'll just go through and see what are the different things over uh, listed over those so the statistics listed over here okay 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 so axial execute elapsed time so simple you just read the term sql execute elapsed time that means the time spent executing the SQL statement. Okay, so out of all the DB time, which is now in our example, you can see it is one, two, four, four, six, three point six seconds. So this is our total DB time. The SQL execute elapsed time is one one seven point or one one seven comma one zero three point sixty eight. So percentage of DB. So this divided by this multiplied by hundred. So this is ninety four percent of time uh, your DB time is being use for sql execute which is good okay so uh, in sql query attention will be find out to be sql took so much of db time okay so now next your db cpu we already learned that what is db cpu so in this particular table it represents the time spent on cpu resource by foreground user processes always remember one thing in this awr everything is foreground no background processes are involved or no background shared pools no nothing background as is involved in your awr okay so it, it does not include the waiting time for cpu db time and db cpu defined two important time scales first is your wait time should be measured against the db time while cpu consumption during certain activity should be measured against the db cpu right so and this uh, this is one important thing you should remember that whatever the wait time are there session waiting times and everything that should be again always measured against the db time and all the cpu consumption should, should be measured against the db cpu so, so these two terms you will see db time and db cpu okay so above uh, on the percentage of showing for db cpu may not be the only percentage to focus on you should also find the below number and then see what is the db cpu uses okay so how you calculate the db cpu uses so it's cpu time divided by number of cpus per elapsed time okay so when the number of cpu is of your operating system statistics section we found it already right number of cpus 176 right so okay the next thing past time elapsed
हेलो ओके आई थिंक आई थिंक इट्स ऑडियो कनेक्शन हैज बीन अगेन री एस्टेब्लिश सो लेट मी नो इफ यू आर एबल टू हियर मी सो आई प्रोसीड ओके सो you can see on the screen i have generated the wr report that uh, for our uh, current ongoing session so you might have, uh, observe that how i you know enter the begin and end snapshot okay so you can see this particular uh, database id database instance name it is a rack or not no it's not a rack then uh, report time okay so database so we already seen this uh, sections i'm just trying to correlate it correlated with what whatever we have understood okay so you can see on the report do i sorry so this the this is the report that uh, right now i have generated uh, you can see this uh, db time and elapsed time now i have generated this report for 1 hour and my db time is 3.20 so we already seen that if your db time is less than your elapsed time that mean there is no point of analyzing the aws so that's why i use a previous uh, example or uh, my uh, old old aws report from my previous project okay so this gives us an entire information and everything that is uh, in this uh, oracle uh, aws report so uh, we have we already seen this time order statistics time order so you can see there is no such information there is no uh, information is there because there is no database uh, specific problem or there is no uh, issues okay so that's why i use the uh, old report to show you guys okay so let's just go back where we were okay so uh, four round weight classes so this is again important thing so uh, it's it's a less of it, this is this is of less issue a weight could have multiple possible causes right uh in different classes depending on the context so you can see this is the uh, this table is out the weight uh, it is by the weight classes so user io db cpu concurrency so uh, total user io weights you can see there is it's a high value over here but total weight time in seconds and average weight time milliseconds we need to consider right so there are over 800 distinct weight events uh, oracle has grouped these weight events in 12 weight classes okay so these weight classes are for the divided in two categories so administrative weight class and application weight class so uh, this all all you are seeing over here is the administrative weight class so idle events are listed down and the end and uh, you should not be focus so much so this is just the half snapshot foreground weight class i will show you this uh, in the actual aws okay shared pool is done time model is done okay so this is the foreground weight event so you can see it's a long list so this uh, this is no there is no point of going through each and every section so just uh, try to think uh, there are total uh, 800 weight classes so oracle has segregated in 12 different classes okay so what the, what is the thing that uh, number of uh, thing you should uh, look over here is the larger weights look at the weight event histogram to identify the distribution of weights if it is closely clustered then uh, an average value or the if there is a wide variance of value so you should first check the top and time foreground events so we already uh, we are, we already saw that in the up, upper section right okay so what uh, sql net messages from client so this is uh, there are some few uh, important things in this particular uh, foreground weight event sorry 
So what is SQL uh, name messages from a client? Okay, so let me just show you over here. In this table it is not captured, so it should be there. Okay, you can see over here SQL net message to client. Right? Here. SQL star net message to client. So now this is the but number of this is total uh, wait time is uh, four seconds. Right. So what this particular uh, what this particular event means is uh, whenever you are uh, idle wait event that can be find the number of average inactive sessions by this way. So number of inactive sessions is uh, total wait time divided by AW time multiplied by 60. So this is the count that we are having in the report divided by 60 multiplied by 60 is equal to average inactive sessions. Okay, so that means uh, the user sessions uh, as such uh, but the number of such connections from application server connection. Okay, so this 384 average inactive sessions means does not necessarily uh, literally means that uh, user sessions, right? But it is the app connections. These are the connections from the application server connection code. Okay. Then there is direct file, uh, direct path read write to the temp. So this uh, particular thing we already also saw in the upper section. So it's it just shows the uh, short sorting, hashing, and all the activities that go on the temp target. Again indicates the PGA target uh, aggregate target setting. Okay. Next next thing is your uh, okay, so what it indicates DB file sequential reads is indicates memory starvation if it's high. Okay, and then I, I've just listed out what uh, for each and every field if you oh, if your observation is high, that means oh, where you should look it out. So uh, for example, if uh, SQL need a uh, more data from client that means if it is very low then it is in the case that oracle net session data unit size is uh, likely set correct coming to the next weight event histogram okay so weight event histogram is again uh, it, it gives you the total distribution of the wait times okay so this uh, this is uh, the less than five millisecond is expected and more than 10 millisecond is considered poor Okay, so more than 10 millisecond wait is not good and less than 5 millisecond is okay. Okay, analysis of the histogram can indicate of uh, high average time is due to the few individual long waits. Okay, so there is DB sequential read. It is always there, always will be listed in this uh, wait histogram. So this parameter will have most higher, mostly higher number of wait events in the histogram. Now, if you see approximate 50% of wait events have less than one millisecond of wait and other 30% has less than two millisecond, that means our disks are working good. Okay, so when wait is low for most of the sessions uh, logging to the database. Okay. Now, where is the DB sequential read? I will just quickly show you. Okay, this is the wait event histogram, and you can see there is a DB sequential read. Yeah, so DB sequential read is there. So 11.9 MB are uh, reads are happening, and this is the entire data for that. And what we are saying is if this parameter is having high number of weight events in the histogram that means uh, if you see 50 percent of events less than one millisecond and uh, 30 percent less than two millisecond that means this is going good now if it is the uh, next thing you know, the uh, sequential read is the key weight event in the next thing will be to find the uh, segment which segment is actually bottleneck so again, you need to go to the segments by physical read. Okay. 
Now the next section is your SQL order by last time. So I have seen a lot of people in uh, you know performance uh, testing and performance. Uh, they will directly jump to this section. Uh, whenever we see the NRSJWR, they will not look what is the top and all the sections that we have seen as of now. They will not look anything and it will they will directly jump to the SQL order by last time. So you should go step by step. You should read AWR report with each and every section. Try to find it out <clears throat> what is the issue. Okay, this SQL order by elapsed time. This is again a, a table which which used to identify the long running SQLs. You know which is responsible for performance issues. Sorry, it gives you full information about the CPU time, the number of executions, and the SQL model which is being executed. Okay, so the top SQLs uh, you find in this table uh, can be found in, in the below table. So it can be matched to the long running or slow process in the application. Okay, so in this particular report, you can see look for a query which is having low executions and high elapsed time. Okay, so what how you should look at this table so which has low executions and high elapsed time. So for example, now if you see this particular query, this, this query, now let me just highlight it. Okay, so now you see, so there are only 53 executions for this particular query, batch server processing, okay? Only 53 executions, but the Elapsed time per execution is 73.64 seconds. So it is high. Again, if you scroll it down, you can you can see there are, there are queries like like this query. So there are only 11 executions, but the elapsed time is 249.93, right? So it is this is access uh, PL SQLs. There is some block, so it is a select count query. So this way you should look. So what people always do is they will just go and check what is the first query and uh, they will just report this is the query is having problem. This is not the case. This is not the way you analyze it, right? You can see this. This is showing the zero uh, elapsed time per second. So that does not necessarily mean it is zero. It means it is uh, being executed in a very few milliseconds. So uh, note that this uh, particular elapsed time per execution is in seconds. Okay. So 0.0, .0 seconds, that means uh, it doesn't mean that this query is executed in a flash. It means it is it's being executed in very low, uh, some few milliseconds, right? So uh, this query is not an issue. This select, decode, select, this part is not an issue, okay? But uh, when you go it down, when you read this particular table, you see this, uh, <clears throat> you found out the your goal should be to find out the SQLs which have less executions, less number of executions, but high elapsed time per execution. So like this 53 and 73. So only 53 executions, but having 73.64 execution uh, time uh, spent. Okay. Similar to this, 11 executions only, but 249.93 seconds time. It is taking time, right? So these are the queries you should report. Okay. So elapsed time can indicate uh, if your SQL is a uh, multi-threading, right? It's a parallel DML SQL multiple versions. So in this case, the elapsed time will uh, will be the multiple times that AWR duration. Okay. So this means the 249.93 multiplied by your uh, whatever duration uh, uh, of your AWR. Okay. So Abhi, you can see the SQL order section can uh, attain uh, again attention often contain the PLSQL calls that contains a scale. So this case procedure. Okay, so there is some example I've given. Okay, so you understand what do you look for this? In this report, you can see look for a query which has low executions and high elapsed time. And the query could be a candidate for troubleshooting or optimization. If in any report you need to check query that has maximum elapsed time but only few executions. Okay. So uh, uh, we already covered that part. 
okay uh, how captured is fuels account for 53.9 percent of total uh, db time it shows that how many percentage of sqls in this particular awr report was able to capture and show us right so the awr report shows this skill which were in the shared pool at the end of the awr time okay so this number should be always high okay which will mean that we are able to capture all those skills if this is low that means you need to have multiple awrs for that particular duration now again in this table we have what is executions what is sql model and elapsed time so this is just normal explanation of fields what is executions so total number of executions we'll just keep it now coming to the next section now sql ordered by cpu time okay so earlier it was sql ordered by elapsed time now it is by cpu time so how much cpu time it is uh, consuming okay so the most uh, useful section is uh, elapsed time then again uh, in this particular section uh, if your awr period uh, in most cases if this section does not reveal much information so sql ordered by elapsed time is the section that you should look but however uh, you can also get the sql uh, queries which are actually using a lot of cpu time okay and uh, you can output this excel so now you can see this access to sql will be always at top uh, in every table now because it is having high cpu time plus high number of executions okay okay so next thing that uh, this section uh, is sql statement that access the most uh, blocks because this these are likely to be the responsible for majority of time okay so how many blocks were read or how many blocks were accessed okay so next is your execution ordered by reads so this section reports the content uh, of the sql area ordered by the number of reads from the data files okay and it can be used to identify sql causing uh, io bottlenecks so sql ordered by reads so this sections we have uh, we have observed in the uh, upper uh, section i mean uh, whenever we were uh, we were looking at the Yeah. time order statistics and upper sections at that time we have you know uh, listed down which sections you to should look for if there is a problem so sql ordered by reads uh, so this is uh, actually <coughs> containing the sql that are ordered by the number of reads so how many sql are reading uh, causing the physical reads and physical writes okay sorry not writes reads only so you can find out which sql are contributing to the percentage of higher ios okay then you have the next uh, is sql ordered by physical reads like the logical reads again it is by physical reads so the, it is uh, this section is of concern when you have uh, exa data machine so if you are not using exa data it's uh, you should uh, you should already always check by the uh, sql ordered by uh, logical reads but however uh, if uh, if this section is having uh, unoptimized uh, fast flash sensor okay additionally the read request accessing storage indexes using smart scans in oracle exa data so this is uh, this is something of uh, exa data okay so this is an again uh, good section sql ordered by parse calls okay so uh, this particular section shows the number of times a statement was passed as compared to the number of time it was executed okay so this is what we already understood about the passing ratio right so one to one to one pass uh, per executions uh, may indicate that uh, bind variables are not being used okay that means there are if the number of parsing calls and number of executions are same that means there is no bind variables so this query is listed over you can see parse call 57614 and executions 57615 right so total parses 0.193 okay so uh, on rdbms version 8172 and higher the init.ora parameter session cache cursor was not set in the init.ora so 100 is usually the suggested starting value this is the cursor 
the shared pool uh, may be too small and the pass is not being retained long enough for multiple executions. So th these are some kind of passing issues you can uh, interpret from this section. Okay. SQL ordered by pass call. So uh, what I want to show you over here is you can see this uh, 57,614 pass calls were there and executions were 57,614 or uh, 15. That means one was the hard pass and the remaining passes were used uh, for the executions, right? Okay. Now table space IO stats. Again, it is in outs ordered by the table space. So this is a uh, very useful when you have the table spaces more than once. So system table spaces as the number one uh, source of the IO because it has uh, you know a log file reads, log file writes, and everything is done on the system uh, table space. So uh, usually in the OLTP systems, so online transaction platform. Uh, one of the indexes table spaces should at, be at the top in the WH or OLP data, at a data table space. It should be at the top. So this is not that much of uh, use for a performance tester, but it will be used by the database uh, administrators. Now this is the buffer pool advisory. Okay, so when uh, these, there are multiple advisory sections in your AWR like buffer pool advisory, shared pool advisory, SGAPG advisory. Okay, so this actually report, uh, this report answers the question that how big sh uh, should you make your database buffer cache? Okay, so you can see this, uh, that th there is particular uh, P is there. So D, there are different types of buffers. Okay. So it provides an ex uh, extrapolation of the benefit of uh, or determine that uh, it would result you added or remove the memory from database. So right now, if you see this buffer pool uh, advisory, uh, when uh, you should look for the, the current size, so your, your current size will be at the factor one. When your size factor one, so I now captured uh, it over here. So what is the size factor one here? Uh, that will be your uh, current size of your buffer pool okay so uh, if it is significant so if it is uh, greater than 20 percent reduction in physical io you can suggest increasing the pool so what, what how do you suggest it so you you should look at let me just check uh, let me just get this in here buffer pool scale Yeah. Right. So this is buffer pool advisory. So uh, size factor one, that means uh, our current buffer pool size is 16152. So 16, uh, M, uh, 16 GB is our current buffer size. So how you use this uh, table advisory table, you should look uh, at the estimated uh, physical reads factor. Okay, so now uh, if you see over here, so estimated physical reads in thousands and estimated physical read time. So you can see estimated physical read time is always one. Okay, so if it, it doesn't, it does not mean that uh, if it, anyhow, if you increase your buffer pool, there will be no uh, specific impact because your estimated physical read time will be always one second. Right, so there is no specific impact, so you should not uh, engage in increasing the buffer pool. Okay, similar way, in similar fashion, there we have uh, the same advisory for uh, next. Okay, so this parameter P I was talking about. So default buffer cache pool. So parameter P uh, indicates uh, which which is the present. Okay, which is always present. So buffer cache may have other sub pools. So buffer cache advisory section will uh, have the separate subsection for each of the uh, sub pools distinguished by each and every letter. So it follows like D is for default buffer cache if it which will be always present. K is for keep buffer cache. Then R is for recycle buffer cache. And N is for the cache for the non-default block. 
okay so uh, usually you, you don't see all these things but d will be always present in your awr sometimes you have k and r k and r so size factor is the nothing but uh, it shows that how the proposed size of your buffer cache will impact uh, when you are changing the size factor right so uh, the next thing is you should look for the estimated physical reads factor if it is estimated physical read factor should be one okay so right now if we increase our buffer cache from 16 to 24 gb it is helping us significantly so this factor will come down one to 171 but that is not that much required as of now now pj advisory similar to the buffer pool advisory we have pga memory advisory so whenever we are using auto memory management uh, oracle is using auto memory management so it will always provide this kind of table now again the things you should look over here is so whenever the size factor one indicates the current pga size so when this one is 12.28 that means we have 12, 12 gb is the current pga size and how you should uh, find a uh, estimated uh, PGA, pga size is that and with this allocation if estimated pga cache hit is 100 percent so you can see uh, when i'm using size factor one when my pga is uh, 12 gb the estimated pga cat hit percentage is 100 so it is good so if my pj size was uh, 9 gb i was I, I could already i could already uh, only get the 91% hit of pj cat so uh, it it was not good for my uh, database performance so so this is correctly sized now so in this case now you don't have to worry about anything okay so even if you increase now uh, from 12 gb to 14 gb there is no uh, impact in the estimated pj cache because we are already on the good configuration so it is not advised to increase the pg further okay but decreasing the pg size can save some memory you can see uh, if you go from 12 gb uh, to 9 gb you can see size factor 0.75 you, you will save some sort of memory and how it is impacting is uh, the estimated time will be uh, increased uh, by a significant percentage uh, but the estimated pga over over uh, allocation count will also increase okay so this is the example again that how you should read this memory advisory table and what is the information that we already discussed over here okay then the same way you have shared pool advisory now again uh, for the shared pool advisory you can see uh, shared pool size factor so when it is where it is one that means you have 12 gb of shared pool and uh, currently configured so for this current size factor your estimated lc time saved is 836789.27 uh, right so you should check this kind of thing over here again so uh, in shared pool it is uh, it is qualitative kind of pool while other pools are quantitative okay so this means it is it greatly depends what you are keeping in shared pool and not just how much you are keeping right so similar to the buffer pool advisor and pga uh, in in this uh, it is the size factor that you are you are looking at so in this example if you are we already have 12 gbs allocated to the shared pool so with this allocation if the estimated lc load time is 169098 you can see 169098 so estimated lc load uh, load time so you can see even if we increase this so we are getting a slight benefit so there is no that much higher impact right so there is no point of increasing in uh, the shared pool size right so the estimated lc time save uh, is the factor you should actually uh, you should actually check so uh, even after increasing you are not saving so much uh, of the time okay so now it will your buffer with statistics 
okay so this is again that uh, the same section that we talked about in the previous uh, upper uh, upper sections where, uh, where we, we may have some problems uh, then we need to come here and look at uh, this section buffer with statistics and there is an nq activity so the buffer with statistics report it, it will help you to drill down a specific buffer weight events okay so there are multiple buffer weight events you have seen so now in this particular report you can see there is data block class which is have which is having very high amount of weights and also a high uh, weight average times second okay so sorry so we specifically focus on total weight time and uh, in this example it's three it's only 3709 so it's not a big issue and it's also the average time in millisecond is only two millisecond so it's not a big issue so buffer is uh, properly configured then at the right side you can see nq activity so the nq activity report it, it provides information on nqs okay so nqs is nothing but the role uh, we already saw that eq whatever the eq role of contagion was that it's nq right uh, so you might dig further into the nature of the nq and you, you can determine the cause of delays so this can give you the information for weights okay which can uh, indicate the percentage of times that nq has to wait and uh, number of failed gates so there are different types of NQs. You can see transaction roll of quotation, job scheduler queue lock, HW segment, high watermark, then transaction index contention. So there are different types of uh, NQ types are uh, over listed over here. And uh, you should look at the failed gates. How many gates were failed and what is the uh, wait time in seconds. So here uh, 529 gates were failed, transaction roll of contention. So this is a, uh, actually an issue in this particular AWR report. Uh, rule of contention is the issue. You can see out of uh, 672 requests, only 140 were successful and 529 were failed. Right, and this was the uh, uh, wait time. So this is a transaction rule of contention. That's an issue. <coughs> So coming to the next slide, segment summary, undo segment. So what is undo segment? It is a, a particular segment in your uh, database where you have a uh, retention, okay? Minimum and maximum tune retention minutes for undo data. So this data will help to set the undo retention database parameter. So this is not that much of uh, importance for a performance uh, engineer, but you can at least have uh, information like what it actually means. This is something that we uh, should look for the latch activity. Okay, so the latch activity will always uh, uh, useful because it uh, we may, if Oracle is uh, suffering from latching problems. So this is the section you should uh, look it at okay so now you can see the uh, aq dq hash table latch is it's a uh, 57 gate request and it is listed at the top sorry so there are uh, similar to the buffer pool there are different types of uh, latch statistics available okay so uh, they cause significant amount of sleeps that aren't of concern so sleeps can be a problem but we need to work look at the spin count if you have excessive sleeps spin count and uh, was based on the C cpu speed and 2000 uh, settling was several years ago if latch weights or other latch related events aren't showing up then the latches probably aren't an issue okay Okay, so segment by logical read. So this is the thing that we already discussed in the upper section. So if you are having, uh, if you are finding out the queries which are actually taking high logical reads, you we should come uh, to this section and find out which segment it belongs. Okay, so this details based on the logical reads happen. So data displays is sorted on logical reads column. Okay, and most of the SQLs can can be found under the sections SQL statistics SQL order by gates so we already saw that in the above slides okay so this report can help you find out the objects which are hot that means which are which can be uh, accessed uh, which are being accessed by uh, your 
oracle a lot of time so okay so when the segments are suffering from high uh, logical io those segments are listed here okay so the table has high logical reads and its index has relatively small logical reads so you can see this uh, owner is e i f s a p p and uh, there is a table space name is i f s a p p index and the object name is your primary key index okay so object type is index so you have high logical reads on index and some few low logical reads on table so you need to reduce the range uh, with an additional filtering condition whose columns are in the same index so this is the section or this is the segment you identify and you can report it to the dba saying that was well, this is the particular segment i am finding out the queries are being uh, taking high uh, logical reads so you can mul use multiple indexes to uh, reduce it then you have similar fashion segments by physical reads so similar to the logical reads you have similar uh, physical reads column uh, physical reads table so whenever the sql needs uh, excessive physical reads on the particular segment so this section uh, list all the sqls okay so now you need to take if some of the sqls are using unnecessary full table scan okay and wide range scan so this, this statistic displays the segment details based on physical reads happen okay so all the data displayed on this table is sorted on the physical reads column so highest the physical reads the first you will get the particular segment okay so segments which are more physical reads are happening queries using this segments should be analyzed to check whether any full table scan is happening on this segments okay so full table scan is happening uh, proper indexes should not be created should be created to eliminate the full table scan so under sql statistics sql ordered by reads we get the particular segments and we need to analyze this particular segment then it is your row lock width so in this particular uh, awr we have a row lock contention issue right so if there is a high level of nq tx row lock contention uh, you will find the segment over here so this segment we need to find the statistics display the segment details based on row total row lock weights so this our particular uh, awr we have a uh, issue with this row lock contention next is your segments by itl weights okay so for each top segment compared so number percentage of captured shows the percentage of itl weights for each capture segment again it is uh, in descending order on the percentage of capture okay so whenever transaction modifies the segment block it will uh, first add transaction id and in the internal transaction list which is itl okay so this is the list table of block so size of table is block level configurable parameter based on the value this parameter uh, those may be itl slots are created in the each block so itl bit happens in case uh, total transactions is trying to update same uh, same block at the same time okay and which is it is greater than the itl parameter value so at that times itl weights will be happening so there are very few itl weights in this table you can see so it's not of a, a issue then segments by buffer busy weights so we already see uh, we can see in this table uh, the system buffers uh, busy weights are high the section uh, it leaves the segments that are suffering from the buffer busy weights
okay so this is the last happen uh, transaction is time same time so say in this scenario uh, the first transaction which acquires the lock on the block will be able to proceed further whereas the second transaction will have to wait okay so uh, if there are more than one instances of a process continuously polling databases by executing same sql same block is read concurrently by all the instances of a process and this result in buffer visibility so in this case you can see scheduler job it is uh, in it, it is an index which is having uh, 6745 buffer visibility so percentage time of capture is uh, percentage of capture is 84.74 percentage so it's not actually a problem because uh, it's a system table space so oracle uh, is actually using this particular thing so we don't have any specific issue an application related issue so this is done for this particular i will uh, list out the a ddm and ash uh, uh, things and i will share you out with this pdf okay so any questions for this because this is a, i understand it's a very lengthy session and there are a lot of parameters i try to cover in detail each and every section or uh, what is there so it's better if you go and uh, uh, read read through everything and let me know if uh, something is not clear and we will uh, we should re revisit it or i will try to get back to you uh, for the same okay so i am just concluding this session so please let me know or let me just check if anyone is there available okay so suresh and imanchu is there so suresh and imanchu if you have any questions uh, for this uh, please ping me on whatsapp group or you can email me so i will be able to answer your question also i'm i'm going to share this deck uh, in form of a pdf so it will help you to you know cross reference and awr whenever you are analyzing so signing off